In the past, I have written so many goals, but never going beyond writing them down. Today, I will show you how I now review my goals on a regular basis to ensure that I stay on track and get better results in achieving them. Hi, I'm Mary Ann. Through my own planning, I hope to inspire you in yours. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and all things mentioned today, I will have in the description below. A lot of us make goals, especially at the beginning of a new year, but how many of us look back to see how we're going? I'm the first to put my hand up and say, I've been guilty of having great intentions, but never really reviewing it until a new year comes again, or when my clothes still don't fit, or I spend way too much time on my phone rather than developing myself mentally. What I've found that has helped me is to track the steps or habits I have set in achieving those goals. I can then see how I'm progressing from a bird's eye view on a weekly basis. Then I can review it mid-month and at the end of the month and can adjust along the way. How to review your goals. I will show you what I use to set my goals, how I track the daily tasks to achieve those goals and how I work out how I did for the month. What I use to set my goals. I use my Wheel of Life Goals Tracker, which has space to set goals for seven areas of focus, mental, physical, spiritual, family, career, finance, and social. What I have found helpful with this tracker is that it just has enough space for one to two action steps for each area of focus. When setting your goals, you need to make sure they are SMART goals. That is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. I won't cover how I set my monthly goals in this video, but if you want to see a separate video of that, let me know in the comments section below. So how do I know how well I'm going with my goals? I note it down in my habit tracker. In my habit tracker, I write down the things that I already do habitually. The reason I have it in there is to help me stack new habits before or after it. According to James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, use a current habit you already do and stack a new one onto it. This is called habit stacking. The formula is before or after an existing habit, I will do a new habit. My habit tracker doesn't have all these other things on it because I need a reminder to do them, but it's a stepping stone to help me achieve a new habit. Each day I mark what I have completed. Now I don't mark off the tracker after each individual task, no. I batch the markings during a break in my day or if I need a reminder of what to do next when my day maybe isn't flowing too smoothly. Then after a few days or a week, I can start to see patterns emerging. Like for example, I don't get to complete everything during the evenings and maybe it's something I need to review later. Or there might be a simple explanation like I was sick or I had a different project happening at the time. Don't look at a habit tracker as pointing out what you're not doing, but rather what you might need to do instead. I used to look at my habit tracker as a sign that I was failing. If you see it that way, then yes, it's not going to be a useful tool for you. For me, in my habit tracker, I can clearly see I'm more productive in the mornings. So I may have to schedule important tasks or habits in the morning rather than in the evening. Today, we're going to do a review of my July goals. Here you can see I did a mid-month review for July. The way I got these percentages is by counting how many times I achieved the action steps for each area of focus in the first 15 days of the month. For example, for physical, I set a goal of walking two kilometers each day. I walk 10 days out of the first 15 days, which is 67%. Not bad. You can create thresholds for yourself to gauge how you're going. So for me, 60% is good and over 75 is great. I reviewed how I went with each area of focus and gave it a percentage score. For spiritual, finance and my career or side hustle, I did quite well. However, for my social goal, which is to connect with family and friends, I only scored 4% in the first half of July. So for the rest of July, I can put actions in place to make sure I improve that for the rest of the month. And for the other areas of focus, I need to up my game. It's now time to see how I went for the whole of July. But before I do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you're getting value out of it. Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to get notified of new video uploads. Let's title this page so if I need to look back, I know exactly what the information is for. So July review.
mental 22 days out of 31, 71%. Physical 11 days out of 31, 35%. Spiritual 21 days out of 31, 68%. Career or my side hustle, 20 days out of 31, 65%. Social, 11 days out of 31, 35%. Family. Clearly, the three areas I want to focus on for August are physical, family and social. To ensure I get a good life balance, I need to make sure these three areas are not neglected any further in August. The whole point of tracking your habits to achieve the habits you have set for yourself is so that you don't wake up after months have passed or a new year comes around and wonder where did the time go and why did I neglect that area of my life? You have the opportunity to plan, do and review. You're not going to get it all done all of the time. That's not the goal. The goal is to make sure you are doing something in each area of your life so you have a good balance. There will be seasons where one area may take over, like you have to work on a major project or you can't work out because you're not well. So the wheel of life may not be balanced every time, all of the time, but by tracking it and reviewing it, you have the opportunity to balance things up again. Now, if you want to see more of how I review my habit tracker to achieve my goals, the next step is to watch this video right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.